Simon, um, you've been in this class for quite a few years now, haven't you? I have. Now, I haven't been in this class for many years, but I've just been watching it. It all looks yeah. incredibly hard and it looks fascinating. One of the things that I'm pretty sure about, though, is that if you want to be competitive in this class, you pretty much, let's be honest, need to have a Mac 2 right now or something very, very similar. But let's just say that it's probably got to be a Mac 2. And the way that life is, it's about a $25,000 investment, mm -hmm. which is about £15,000 sterling. Mm -hmm. It's about 25000 Australian That's at the moment, so same US Australian. Now, that's quite a lot of money by anyone's standards, let alone for an 11-foot boat. Mm -hmm. It then seems that you need to sail a lot to, to be any, have any chance of winning, and you've got to be pretty talented in the first place. Yeah. And therefore, you could argue that it seems to be that the full-time pros or almost full-time pros are all the guys at the top of the class. Now, that's how it looks to me. Am I wrong? Uh, am I missing something here? Or is that the way it's progressing? I, you know, Mark, I think that's a good summary. Uh, yeah, you need the right kit. Um, we could talk about boats for a long time. Uh, right now, Mark II is in vogue. We've had previous designs before that, and I'm sure going forward there'll be new designs coming out. That's just the way it has been. Uh, ever since I first did my... Uh, first European Championship 26 years ago. Um, I'm pretty familiar with the with the, uh, uh, the the class and how things have gone. And nothing is new. Um, your point on professionalism is, is is a good one, and I mean professionalism in as in treating the object of winning seriously. Right now, we're seeing many Olympic sailors coming in. Uh, I am pleased that they are respecting the DNA of the class. In what way are they respecting it? So this class is, you know, one of the 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 the, 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 spe the specialness of this class um, is is really the sailors, uh, the way they treat each other, the way that if you're uh, lying second in the world championship and you break your mast, the guy who's lying first would likely to lend you some kits. Um, winning is important, but it's not as important as this extended family that we have. Why has the moth, how has the moth created that? Because surely in any elite competition, ultimately, winning is the goal and pretty much at all costs. So what you're suggesting is that in the moth class, it's not at all costs. And why is that? Well, uh, it certainly hasn't been at all costs. And that's largely as a result um, of the development nature of the class and that people have built their own boats. They have tested things. They have broken things. They've been at events and they've needed a hand. Uh, the other point there is the boats are hard to sail. You have to give a little bit and take a little bit on the race course. Uh, yesterday I had a, uh, a, a port and starboard with Joe Turner. You know, I, I could have called starboard on him. It would have been a drama for us both. I ducked, we've ducked, we, you know, and I'm sure Joe will do the same to me. It, and, all, comes and around, it all comes round, yeah. yeah. And so that little bit of flexibility is important, yeah. an allowance to help, an allowance to yeah. help people sail the boat. Those, that, that sounds, I totally understand what you're saying, it sounds extremely positive, but uh, nothing's perfect. W what are the problems, yeah. would you say, right now? If you kind of open the, the, the dirty laundry basket of the moth class, what are the problems today? Uh, that's an interesting question. I haven't thought entirely what the problems are. I suppose if you think that we have been a, you know, a, 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 a small town for a long time, and everyone in that small town has known each other. Uh, and then what has happened is somebody's built a big new housing estate, uh, i.e. Mac 2 or Blade Rider before us, and new people have come in not understanding the culture of that town. Now, it, 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 any, any, any town planner will tell you, you know, that you, you can have friction there. You know, people need to get to know each other. Fortunately, we've got enough events so that can happen. Olympic sailors need to remember that they're in this class because it's not Olympic and they're enjoying it. And I see people like Nathan sailing because he loves sailing. Um, sure, he wants to win and he, that's, you know, his job is to sail. Uh, nobody has any truck with that. Uh, but equally, you know, uh, nobody is more important than anyone else in this class. And the guy who's dragged his boat through his mother's living room um, with wet paint to the guy who's just bought a brand new Mark II. We're all the same on the beach. Um, everyone is treated in the same way. We admire the guys who go out and win, but we help the guys who need a hand as well. It's a broad church, basically. Yeah, exactly. Simon, thanks for your help again. Thanks for explaining okay. the moth class. And again, best of luck this week. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks a lot.